Hey everyone, welcome back to Lazy Boy Crypto. Today I have another layer one blockchain for you, but this one is brand new. Sometimes we talk about projects that will survive a bear market, but we don't often talk about projects that are new and appear during a bear market. Well, this is one of them. And this layer one blockchain is called Corium. And what it is, is a super scalable, super fast layer one blockchain that uses a bonded proof of stake consensus mechanism. And there is something quite unique about Corium, which I will get into later. And I'll also tell you how to get free core token airdrops. Now the main net has not been launched. So currently Corium rests on the XRP ledger. But once the main net is launched later this year, then the core token will be the native coin of the Corium blockchain. So let's get into it. This is Corium. It's a brand new layer one blockchain that I think you will want to pay attention to. So let's get right to it. So this is the Corium website, and I think it looks really good. So it is one blockchain, and it's got a heavy focus on DeFi. You'll notice right here, it says things like stable coins, CBDCs, tokenization, trading, market makers. It is a blockchain with a heavy focus on DeFi. So it's really targeting developers who want to build DeFi apps, as well as people and companies that are not in crypto right now. They want regular businesses like financial businesses, banks and so on to actually start building on the blockchain using Corium as its main blockchain for things like cross-border payments or CBDCs. Like Corium wouldn't put CBDCs here unless it was also targeting uh, people, companies, organizations, industries that are not currently into crypto. Now it is a scalable, fast, interoperable layer one blockchain. It uses a bonded proof of stake consensus mechanism. And they say it's a third generation blockchain. So let's take a look. Now it can do 7,000 transactions per second and there are 16 rotating validators at any given time. Now I'll get a bit into the validators later, but basically um, there's 16 validators at any one time processing transactions and that rotates. It is efficient, it is environmentally friendly. Now there is a video here that you can watch, I'm not gonna do it now, but it does give you an overview of Corium. Now, to write smart contracts on Corium, it uses WebAssembly. Now, a lot of blockchains these days, they are compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine. So that's what they use to write smart contracts. But Corium uses WebAssembly. And what that means is it gives developers the opportunity to write smart contracts in their preferred coding language. Because when you're stuck with the Ethereum virtual machine, you're limited to just one coding language. But with the WebAssembly, you can actually write smart contracts in whatever you prefer. Of course, the preferred language is actually Rust, but you can actually write smart contracts in many other different programming languages. So that really does open up the doors to developers who may not be into crypto or blockchain technology right now. They are hindered essentially, unless they learn the correct coding language for the Ethereum virtual machine. But if they use WebAssembly and build on Corium, then they can use the programming language that they're already comfortable with. It is interoperable. Corium deploys a bridge functionality to interoperate with various change through collateralized wrapping. So this is pretty standard right now. We're seeing a lot of new blockchains that are interoperable. They also have a developer's grant available. So if you are a developer, you want to build on Corium, then you can get a grant to do so. You just have to apply right here on the website. Now, this is the white paper. They have just released it in the last couple of days. So I'm not going to go through it all because that will be very boring. But I will point out just a few things that I think are interesting. Now, in order to scale Corium, it's going to rely on side chains with each chain being able to do 7,000 transactions per second. So you have the native DEX chain because Corium is going to have a native inbuilt decentralized exchange. And then you can also have the asset chain for asset tokenization. And then you can also have other side chains with um, each having its own use case. So effectively, you could have uh, as many transactions as you want going through every second. Um, all you need is a side chain for each utility. There are applications that cannot run on multiple side chains. For example, a DEX. For such use cases, a dedicated chain will run individually. So you can have the DEX chain, the asset tokenization chain, and then other side chains as well. So this is how it intends to scale. 
And of course, with side chains, they all take advantage of the security of the main chain and use the same consensus as the main chain. So you're not compromising on security or decentralization here when you use side chains. It just helps to scale and get as many transactions as possible. When it comes to decentralization for Corium, there's going to be three types of validators. So the public validators can be anyone who stakes the minimum amount of core coins. And so you can become a public validator just by staking the required amount. And then if you're a public validator, you can become a super validator. And in order to do this, you just have to put forth a proposal and get more than 50% of the votes from the other public validators. And once you've got that, you can become a super validator. And a super validator is just someone who has trust of the other validators and the entire network. And it's basically saying, hey, I'm a super validator, therefore I'm equal to like 10 public validators. So the idea is you can have fewer validators on the network, which means that the network can be faster, but it's not compromising security. So instead of having, you know, 100 public validators, you could say have 10 super validators instead. Like a super validator carries more weight so you can have fewer of them making the network run faster, but not compromising on security, if that makes sense. Now, super validators can actually be demoted. So the rest of the public validators, they just have to make a vote and they can demote a super validator. And then there are the active validators and the active validators are the ones that are actually validating, processing, securing the network at any given time. And there's going to be 16 active validators at any one time and they will rotate. So super validators and public validators, there'll be two like separate waiting lists and uh, it will rotate. The active validators will rotate amongst the public and super validators. So for the 16 active validators, it will be a mixture of the public and super validators at any given time. So it gives everyone the opportunity to receive block rewards when they're processing these transactions. So this is a good thing because it means that at any given time, there are only 16 validators actually validating transactions on the network. It means the network can run much faster than if you have you know hundreds and thousands of validators operating all at the same time and obviously the network is still going to be secure these other validators still help to secure the network but it's only going to be the active validators at any given time that are actually you know producing new blocks and receiving the block rewards and because it is a bonded proof of stake mechanism, it means that you can stake your core coins and you can delegate them to any validator of your choice to receive rewards. So if you can't afford to become a public validator yourself, you can just delegate your core coins and you can still receive staking rewards. And because it's bonded proof of stake, it means that you still get a vote in all the uh, governance and the processes and the future of the Corium network. And here briefly, they talk about WebAssembly. They say it's a much greater engine for smart contract execution with great scalability and support. And uh, it's true that uh, developers can use lots of different programming languages um, in order to write smart contracts. So that really does open up the doors um, to lots of developers. Corium will have a native decentralized exchange built into the network. So um, it can facilitate trading of any issued asset as well as core within its function. So Corium is going to have its own decks. You can create limit orders, uh, stop loss orders, any kinds of order type. You can have order book data as well. It's going to be uh, really good to get uh, fast and cheap uh, trades uh, on the Corium blockchain. Corium has a major focus on DeFi. It really wants DeFi applications built on it. And here are some of the use cases. So tokenized securities. Now, uh, the core team is the same as the Sologenic team. Now, Sologenic is a crypto that is built on the XRP ledger. And its main uh, idea is it wants to tokenize securities like uh, stocks and ETFs, commodities, and then to be able to trade those tokenized assets against cryptocurrency. 
So uh, you can build tokenized asset uh, applications on Corium, liquidity providers, cross-border payments, stable coins, lending platforms, decentralized exchanges, and metaverse applications. So there is a heavy focus on DeFi here. And what's interesting is the cross-border payments, banking, and remittance. Now, Corium, as I, as I said before, they really want to target uh, businesses and financial institutions to start building on Corium. And if you notice, I said that Sologenic was built on the XRP ledger. The uh, Sologenic team, the Corium team, they love XRP so much. And XRP is really designed for banking and financial institutions to make cross-border payments. And uh, Stellar as well, um, that's more catered towards the retail aspect of that. But again, it's for cross-border payments. But the thing you'll notice with XRP and Stellar is that they, those networks, they're not able to have smart contracts uh, written onto those networks. So you can't build uh, decentralized apps on Stellar or XRP. So the Corium team is basically thinking, okay, well, uh, we're gonna have this smart contract functionality inbuilt into our network. Um, and we're also going to focus on cross-border payments. So they're doing what Stellar and XRP can't do currently. So that might take some of the market share away from XRP and Stellar because Corium will be uh, more capable. It will offer more flexibility um, and yet it will have the same speed and the same uh, very, very cheap fees uh, for making these transactions. So um, I think they've um, identified a gap in the market here. Um, and that's why I'm really excited about Corium. Now, this page of the white paper, I don't think um, was <laughs> proofread or anything. There's like, there's a typo here and the logo uh, sits above some text here that you can't see, but this is the Corium logo. So the token is core. Um, it's a token right now because it's on the XRP ledger, but once the main net is released, then it will migrate and the uh, core uh, coin will become the native cryptocurrency of the Corium blockchain. The initial supply is going to be 500 million um, coins. And this is how the allocation is going right now. So 70% is to the community. Now, right now, if you hold Solo, which is a token on the XRP ledger, then you can get um, monthly core airdrops direct to your Solo wallet. Um, you need to have a trust line set up. Uh, I do have another video about that, so go check it out if you haven't seen it. Um, I tell you how to set up the trust line. Um, so right now they're giving away 20% of the allocation to the solo community, and then they're going to be giving away 30% to the core community. So after this solo airdrop is complete for the solo holders, um, once you've received all your core, then you can also receive uh, more core on top of that. So it's like compounding. So uh, they're really incentivizing people to hold their core that they receive in these airdrops. And I just want to show you quickly, this is the Corium Explorer. So you know how blockchains have their own Explorer where you can see previous transactions and everything. Um, well, this is what the Corium one looks like. I think it looks pretty clean, looks really nice. I love the color scheme. So this is the Corium blockchain. And uh, like I said, you can get the core tokens right now if you hold solo in your wallet. They're about halfway through this, so there's still about six snapshots left to be taken. So you can still get some core tokens if you hold solo. And then after that, you can get more core tokens just by holding core in your wallet as well. Yeah, I like Corium a lot. I think that they are cornering the market in terms of targeting financial institutions, and yet they have smart contract capability. Not only that, but they have um, the web assembly, which means that any developer in any programming language can make a smart contract. So people aren't limited. It really opens up the doors to anyone building on Corium, which I think is fantastic. And right now, let's just look at the price really quick. It is about 35 cents. And and the market cap is pretty low at $35 million. So I do think it has a lot of room to grow. Like I said, it is brand new and the white paper has just been released, but do your own research, read the white paper yourself and see what you think about Corium. So that's Corium. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please give it a like and consider subscribing. It really helps me out. And I will be having more videos on other layer one blockchains, other projects coming out very soon. So thanks for watching and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again soon. Thanks.